I'm building this Nakashima inspired shop stool slash side table and it's from a walnut tree, absolutely gorgeous, that a friend gave me. He gave me a hundred year old walnut tree and we bought a bandsaw mill and we milled it up. We've got about 85 slabs. So I'll leave a link down to the website where we have those. Uh, but I, th this slab has a crack that looks like it could develop down the middle. It hasn't yet, but it's a really cool dark part of the slab, but it's, you know, has the potential to crack. So I want to do a butterfly key, but I have always wanted to do an abalone butterfly key. And I haven't had an opportunity before, so I think this would be a great time to do it. And since it's for me, uh, I'm not worried about screwing it up. So I bought this piece of abalone from Amazon. It's about, I don't know, three mil thick or something like that. And I'm gonna use a piece of scrap walnut from this project. We're gonna run the grain the same direction. Some issues that I think we could have in this is one, we have very little material here. Two, abalone is dangerous to sand, so I wanna do as little of it as possible. Uh, and three, uh, you know, I've never cut this with a saw before, so I don't know how easily or how brittle it's gonna be. But let me show you how I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna start by gluing this to this walnut. Uh, and then from there, we'll cut out the the key and then trace it onto our slab, router it out and then fine tune it and hammer it home. So let me show you how I'm gonna do that. So, our glue is now dry, and I've been playing with some shapes that I like, and I don't think I like them super symmetrical. So let me identify the centers. That'll be my butterfly key. And then I'll tilt it this way on the board, so I think it'll give it a neat look. So we're gonna go over to the bandsaw and cut that out. Okay, so I've let the epoxy dry overnight. And we're gonna go ahead and cut this out on the bandsaw. I'm a little worried about it cracking, but I'm using a very small blade with a lot of teeth. I think that should, I did a couple tests, I think it should be fine. I'm gonna cut wide to start and see uh, and make sure that we're not getting any cracking. I've also taken a marking knife and scored along my lines, which I hope will help with any splitting. Cutting abalone is very dangerous. You can get, I believe it's called silica poisoning. So I'm gonna wear a dust mask and I'm gonna turn on my air cleaner as well as my dust collector. If you're doing this, it's up to you to be responsible for your own safety, but I highly recommend you take all precautions you can when you're cutting abalone. So let's go ahead and cut this out on the bandsaw. I'm gonna take you in close here and show you how we do this. So the abalone key is cut, the edges are refined, they're super square and crisp. And so now we need to figure out where we're gonna put it. Like I said before, I'm not really into the whole super symmetrical look, especially with a piece like this where it's not symmetrical. So I'm gonna tilt it, I think, like this. We're gonna go ahead and double stick it down. Give it a nice crisp slide. We're gonna go lightly at first. Make sure we get good, crisp, clean corners. And then once we've got it marked out, I'll go around and do it heavier. There we go, just like that. Got our butterfly key marked out. We're gonna router out the space for our key here. Now, we have very little room for error. Basically, we have point 07 of an inch of air either way so this has to be dead on that is 
1.962 millimeters basically of air here. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna use my plunge base here and I've got a spiral upcut bit in here, which is, and we're not gonna take it all at once here, uh, but I am gonna set my depth and the way I'm gonna do that is, I'm gonna take my key here and I'm going to plunge down next to it until I hit this piece of wood. I'm gonna set that depth here with my depth stop guide. We're gonna set that depth, lock it in, and that way we know we can't go any further than that. So we'll get as close to the line as we can without going over, and then go ahead and uh, finish it off with a chisel. What I like to do when I'm doing this is I start at 90 and then I cant in a little bit so I'm at 89 or so and that a lot it means that uh, our butterfly oh, Jesus John. So now for the sake of getting it to fit and not having it get stuck because we're only gonna have one shot at this, what I like to do is take my chisel and we're gonna heavily chamfer these corners and again these will never be seen so you do not care what they look like and then from here what I like to do is going from our finished side down I'll chamfer the corner without ruining the the top sharp corner so I don't want to stick that in there too far and not be able to get it out but looks like we got a good fit um, I'm going to go around and check all my edges and make sure there's nothing left from the uh, chiseling. Okay, then just to make sure we get a good fit, I'm just going to give a light, 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 light sanding to each side. We're going to make sure that when we sand, it's flat or even angled in on the bottom here. Just to ensure that we're good all the way around. In fact, I see a little something right there. All right, here goes nothing, folks. Do a little bit of glue. I don't want to go overboard. Jackman Works is for you. Get it spread in there pretty good. Make sure we put this in right. As you can see, it worked, which is pretty exciting. It fits in there darn snug, but just to make sure, what, I'm, what I like to do in these kind of situations is I'll just smash glue into all the crevices. Then give it a good cleaning, just like that. And then I'm gonna take some sawdust from when I was routing it out. and just rub that into all the edges. And if there's any gaps, and it didn't really look like there was, this will fill it with the same colored material that I had before. Okay, we got this thing in. I'm really happy. I can't believe that it worked. I was a little worried it was gonna crack at some point during this, but it, uh, it all worked out. So we're gonna go ahead and sand it up through the grits. I'm going to make sure I got my dust mask, my safety goggles on, I've got my sander hooked up to a vacuum and we're gonna be running the air cleaner in the shop. So we're gonna be as safe as we can and we're gonna go ahead and uh, sand this up and, and run it through the grip. So 
So we're gonna go ahead and put some shellac on here so we can see what it looks like. If you wanna see what the final piece looks like, next week I'll be releasing a uh, Nakashima inspired shop stool that this is part of. So here we go. I think if uh, I learned anything on this project, it's that Abalone's not too bad. I was a little worried that it was gonna crack, but everything worked out great. I'd love to see pictures of your abalone inlay keys or any other inlay keys you do. Please send them to me. Also, check me out on Instagram, at jcatsmoses. Like, comment, subscribe, all that other good stuff. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and have a fabulous day.